Look, there's no denying the fact that it's been a rough few years for Dell, with consistently negative reviews across their consumer class products, the two losing business revenue against competitors such as Lenovo, heck, even HP. Dell's had some questionable years. However, it makes total sense for them to entirely rebrand their product lineup to kind of freshen things up, and I'm not opposed to that. But their new lineup is also, unfortunately, a little confusing. So you've got the Dell class of laptops, which replaced their consumer class, laptops such as Inspiron and XPS. Then you've got the Dell Pro, which is their mid-range business laptops. And then you've got the Dell Pro Max. I wonder where they got that name from, hmm, but that's their high-end business workstations. Today, we're having a look at the Dell Pro 14 Plus, which is their mid-range laptop and technically the successor to the Latitude series. Now, this configuration right here is rocking Intel's newest and greatest Core 7 Ultra Series 2 Lunar Lake processor. We've also got the latest generation of Intel integrated ARC graphics to go with it. Furthermore, we get some snappy 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory. We also do have a reasonably sized 512 gigabyte SSD. We get Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4 connectivity. And finally, this is a 14 inch two in one display. Now keep in mind that this laptop also comes in a non two in one form factor. So that might physically be slightly different, but they are part of the same lineup. So things should be pretty similar. Let's have a look at what the Dell Pro 14 Plus, oh, that's hard to remember, is all about. Quickly going through the packaging experience, you get a black cardboard box, pretty simple stuff. Anyway, open that up behind some more protective packaging. Here it is, the Pro 14 Plus but more on that in just a minute. We also have a 65 watt charging adapter and this is very large for a modern day 65 watt adapter. Companies have gotten smaller. Come on Dell, get with the game. Anyway, you also have a wall out there charging cable piece and then finally you have some basic documentation and a quick start guide. The Pro 14 Plus from both a design and technical perspective is the successor to the 5000 series Latitude laptops, which means it's essentially a business device and Dell has definitely made it even more consistent Derivative. It's got a very simple layout. It's definitely taken inspiration from the Inspiron 14 Plus series, but in a good way. The laptop does have a two thirds metallic exterior, meaning it is a semi premium device. Now, they could have definitely made the whole thing metallic exterior, but I'm assuming they're reserving that for the higher tier devices. It's also worth noting you have that iconic silver color, which I'm a big fan of, and it's pretty nice. You'll also notice that the heat exhaust vents are very well placed at the backside over here to prevent intervention with the display, for example. And my favorite part is that this device only has a overall weight of 3.43 pounds, despite having a two-in-one display, which is relatively light for a 14-inch device. Starting with the top side, like I mentioned, you have a metallic exterior. It's very plain and simple, and I love the minimal look Dell's going for over here. Also, the branding has been simplified. It just literally says Dell, no circle, no reflective stuff, pretty straight to the point. Dell has definitely modernized the IO ports on this device now. So on one side, you have a fully loaded HDMI 2.1 port, the good old USB-A super speed port. We have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, both with DisplayPort version 2.1 and power delivery functionality. On the other side, one more USB-A super speed port, and of course, the headphone jack. The only disappointing thing here really is the lack of a media card reader by default which is a bit of a letdown, but other than that, things are looking pretty good. The bottom side of this laptop is the only plastic component, a bit of an awkward choice, honestly speaking. Thankfully, you do have nice long air intake vents. We'll talk about thermals later on. And then you'll notice you do have two speaker roll cutouts at the bottom corner. We'll do a sound test later as well. When you unfold this laptop, again, things are nice, clean, and simple. You do have an aluminum inner chassis over here with that same iconic silver color, a decent amount of palm rest space. At the center, you have a medium-sized trackpad. However, for $2,500, having a plastic surface finish is unacceptable. This should have been a glass surface finish. The result is while you do have some degree of tactility, you also have a modest amount of flex, which is honestly, again, disappointing at this price point. Fortunately, in contrast to that, the keyboard experience is exceptional with a capital E. I mean, firstly, these keycaps are reasonably large for a 14 inch device. The font is clear and easy to read. The backlighting system gets quite bright and is very practical. Furthermore, you will notice that there is no built-in fingerprint sensor. However, you do have built-in IR technology, more on that later on. Now, my favorite part about this laptop is the typing experience. I mean, these keycaps are raised, so you get a generous amount of key travel, almost mimicking typing 
focusing on an actual keyboard and you have the right amount of tactility and softness, truly making this probably one of the best keyboards I've typed on of any laptop I reviewed in 2025. So honestly, Dell, well executed. The hinge mechanism itself is very reliable. It's actually quite sturdy. It doesn't wobble a whole lot and you can comfortably do a full 360 degree tilt without putting too much pressure on the body itself. So it should be durable for the years to come. What is hugely concerning though, is that between the 90 degree and 180 degree angle, this laptop kind of rocks back and forth with the base chassis itself. And it can be extremely annoying when you're typing. It's a very minor bounce back, but it's noticeable. And I'm gonna give Dell the benefit of doubt in assuming that this is a one-off issue with my device, but if it is a mass production issue, I have no idea how it made it past QA. If you have this laptop, let me know if you're experiencing the same issue. And Dell, if you're watching this, Please take note. The display fitting here is pretty straightforward. You do have a semi glass in case finishing over here. You will notice that you have a respectably thin chin at the bottom, not too noticeable. The side bezel, same thing, nice and narrow with modern day standards in mind. A bit of a noticeable forehead at the top for some reason, but at the center we do have a extremely clear five megapixel IR equipped webcam, which means the next time you're on Microsoft Teams, at least you'll look really handsome as you tell your superiors that your product is going down the drain. What on God's green earth was Dell thinking when they decided to put such a bare bone basic display on a $2,500 device? Seriously, Dell. So things start off nice enough with a high quality 14 inch IPS panel, but then it all goes down the drain. So you only have a full HD plus resolution on this device, which thankfully does translate to a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, but pretty disappointing. Also, you only have a base refresh rate of 60 Hertz, what the heck? And to make things even worse, you have a peak brightness of 300 nits on a glossy display, which means that reflections and glare will be the bane of your existence in a well-lit room or outdoor settings. Now, fortunately, the touch capture system here is very responsive, so you can cry yourself away as you draw a sad face or a happy face or whatever, but it's also compatible with the Dell stylus and pen. And then also fortunately, you do have some pretty decent color specs with a 100% sRGB rating with the two-in-one display, which means that things are great from a multi-perspective viewing perspective. That was kind of redundant. I should mention though, that if you get the non-two-in-one display, you only get a 45% NTSC rating. Again, criminal. A quick recap of the technical specifications, we've got the Core Ultra 7 268V processor with vPro technology. We also have 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5X memory. And since we have the Core Ultra 7 variant, we also get the higher tier Intel Integrated Art Graphics version 140V. It's worth noting, can also get this laptop with a lower tier Core Ultra 5 processor, as well as 16 gigabytes of memory instead of 32. All of this basically means general productivity like surfing the web, crunching Word documents, doing Excel sheets is going to be an absolute breeze for this machine. You have more than enough horsepower, even more high-end productivity like programming and code compilation on programs like Python. Again, an absolute breeze for this device. It is optimized to do these kind of things in a very fluid motion. Now, if you wanna push your luck in terms of graphics and do 3D level studio animations on programs like Blender, you'll be surprised in a pleasant way. You can get away with some basic renders with not a lot of detail, mind you, but still it's impressive to see that. Now, if you add too many elements, you are gonna start noticing performance drops without the support of a discrete GPU. Now, while you don't really buy a business laptop to do video editing in most cases, it is an exceptional indicator of performance and how far you can push a device. In our case, we did multi-layer 4K video editing. As long as the laptop is plugged in, we're able to stack up up to three layers before we notice any sort of visible frame drops with real-time playback. Now, of course, if you unplug the laptop, it struggles at even 1080p, so keep that in mind. But nonetheless, impressive results and render times are also exceptionally fast for a device that doesn't have a discrete GPU. Now, if you're one of those people whose boss is on vacation and you wanna catch a quick break and play some games on this device, you totally can. Games like Counter-Strike 2, for example, comfortably run north of 60 frames per second pretty much consistently, which really shows how far integrated graphics have come and allow for some casual gaming. Thermals were the key problem with Dell laptops in the past. However, Dell really has turned a new leaf over here and in a spectacular fashion. In fact, with this device under unrealistic peak loads, we hit a maximum upper third temperature of just 36 degrees.
degrees Celsius, which for context is 10 degrees cooler than the Dell Latitude 5000 that we tested in the past. And a more realistic sustain load will yield you around 34 degrees Celsius, very cool and respectable numbers. Unfortunately, fan noise, not so much. While things are pretty quiet under idle load, the minute you do anything that's even moderately intensive, fans tend to hit full RPM for prolonged periods, hitting noise levels of around mid 60 decibels you know, which is a little bit too high for comfort and well into gaming laptop territory. But collectively speaking, Dell has definitely improved thermals. And for that, they have my gratitude. self upgradability is very limited here. So the only real component you can technically upgrade is the M.2 drive with a 2230 or 2280 drive. The RAM as well as connectivity module seems to be hard soldered. We do get a medium sized 55 watt hour battery, but fret not with Intel's improvements with Lunar Lake, we were able to get a consistent 11 and a half hours of juice with a single charge with a general productivity use case, not too shabby. Now, as far as speaker quality is concerned, look, it's a business laptop, you know, speaker quality or sound quality is not at the top of their mind. So you have a pretty flat experience, but the volume is decent. Here's a quick sound test for reference. Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the nose, I just wanna keep moving. Keep my head up when I act. Head up, that's a fact. Never looking back, I'ma keep myself on track. Keep my head up, staying strong. The Dell Pro 14 Plus with this configuration is spec around 2,500 US dollars. And that is expensive. I mean, laptops as a whole have gotten expensive, but we expect a lot. And to an extent, Dell definitely delivers. I mean, you've got a solid build over here. You've definitely got a nice new minimalist design theme that I'm a big fan of. You get modernized IO ports. Performance is very competitive and modernized. Thermals have also improved significantly. However, then there's just cheapskate moments where Dell has some questions to answer. For example, what's up with the QA issue on my device slightly wobbling at a certain degree of tilt with the actual hinges. But more questionable decisions, or perhaps the worst decision, is the display we have here. It's unacceptable to have a full HD display with 60 hertz refresh rate and 300 nits of peak brightness at this price point. Like, it's actually unfair to you, the consumer. And then there's other cheapskate moments like including a plastic surface trackpad, for example. These little things just keep this laptop you know, from achieving its true potential in my opinion. And while I still believe that this is a very nice device, I can't justify it at the current MSRP pricing. I definitely think this is a laptop that should be about 25% cheaper than it is. And I do believe that this laptop will inevitably go on sale at least 20% off MSRP pricing in the near future. So if you are planning on buying it, I wouldn't discourage you from doing so, but I would definitely say hold off until you get a more fair price on this device, because it does hold back on elements that you will find with other devices in a similar price point, such as a better display, for example. If you already own this laptop, let me know what you think of the Dell Pro 14 Plus. And if you are interested in buying it and you have questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'll try my best to get to them. As always, if you enjoyed this review, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. It genuinely helps me grow and means the world to me. Catch you in the next one.